Hey folks, imagine this, this guy is incredibly stingy and doesn't do anything for anyone. The problem is, life charges a price, and the payback is fatal, as this is an episode from the series The Curiosity Cabinet by Guillermo del Toro. So, hit that like button and let's recap. This old, really old guy is at home living his life, but he's closer to the end than the beginning. Every day, he eats pre-made meals and watches TV about the United States' struggles with other countries. However, this day would be different. He starts cutting a special piece of meat and has a heart attack, collapsing on the floor. Here, we can already learn something. When you get old, life will have humiliated you so much that lying down is like burying yourself. Now, let's move on to Nick who's in his car listening to the radio. A guy starts bad-mouthing immigrants in the country, and Nick gets angry because these people stay in the country without paying taxes. He stops at a storage unit because there's an auction for storage lockers today, and the owner is that old guy. Jack starts the auction, kicking off with a $50 bid, but Nick makes an irresistible offer of $400 and manages to buy it. No one thinks of bidding higher because it's not worth the risk. To give them a taste of what might be inside, Jack opens the door, revealing lots of old furniture. Nick might have struck gold. Nick asks to use the office for a call. He owes a lot of money to some dangerous people, and instead of working to pay off the debt, he prefers buying abandoned places in hopes of finding something valuable to sell. The problem is, time to pay off the debt is running out, and his time on earth is dwindling. Jack tells him not to bring these problems into their work because they're partners. Jack gives hints on which units to buy, revealing that the old owner was extremely miserly. He would hop around every day and return with an empty bag, even though he left with it full. So, there might be something valuable inside. Their plan is to sell at a good price, and if they find something valuable, they'll split the proceeds. Jack mentions that the old guy owned that space since it was built over 35 years ago. Nick goes to check if he struck gold, while at the same time, a distressed woman arrives, saying she can't open her locker. Jack informs her that it was auctioned off since she didn't pay. She insists it's a mistake due to her moving, and she just needs to retrieve some family items like photos of her kids and wedding. Jack points to Nick as the new owner. She tries to reason with him, explaining it's a misunderstanding and she just needs the photos. However, Nick is very stingy and says it's not his problem. He starts suggesting she shouldn't even be in the country, assuming she's an immigrant who doesn't pay taxes. It gets heavy, and he tells her he'd let her take the stuff if she paid a thousand dollars, which is what she makes in a month. He tells her to go back to her country, and it's disturbing to think that there are people like this which is why I'm going back to Africa. Nick enters the storage unit and realizes it's filled with old things. If sold to the right buyer, he could make a good profit to pay off his debt. He leaves to grab a cart and meets Jack, who's tired of working in that place because everything is so old. He tries to convince Nick to let her take her things because she's a good person. However, Nick starts arguing that she shouldn't even be in the country. He mentions losing hearing in one ear while fighting for the country, implying he has more rights than her. Jack gets angry, as he fought more and still deals with issues. Nick gets frustrated because he lacks valid arguments. Nick goes on to retrieve his items and manages to find many valuable things in the woman's locker. In the old man's locker, he starts discovering some antique pieces that appear to be made of gold and a photo album showing that the old man was hiding something very dark, likely related to his escape from Germany. I think we all get the idea. Before leaving, Nick comes across some uniquely designed furniture that definitely holds significant value. But this is where we realize that life isn't so easy. He loads everything into his car, getting ready to leave, but a guy shows up to collect the debt. He beats Nick up and smashes his car as a warning, giving him until the next day to pay $2,000. Nick has no way to come up with the money, and the woman has been watching from a distance all this time, seemingly because Nick is reaping what he sowed. He's frustrated because these things always happen to him. Jack suggests that he knows someone who's into old items and could help. So, he goes to see Helena, a very suspicious old lady. She begins to evaluate the chandelier, but concludes that it's not worth much. However, the table is special to her, as she uses it for unique rituals. As she touches it, she activates something and opens drawers filled with books. While she was already excited about the rare table, 
she becomes even more thrilled about the books, as they're extremely rare and worth millions to collectors. Nick just wants to make some money to change his life. As the third item, he shows her a different painting, and she notes its importance. She asks him to smell it because it's made from human hair. Nick doesn't understand why the old man kept these things. Helena says she knows a friend who understands these things. While she calls him, Nick takes the chance to read the book, but it's in a different language and filled with strange creature images. He doesn't suspect anything. Christoph arrives excited, but Nick just wants to know the value and leave because he needs the money. Christoph evaluates the items and tells Nick he could become very wealthy that night. He mentions they need to find the fourth book, as it's part of a very ancient series that could change the world. To entice Nick, he offers $5,000 for the table, chair, and hair painting, and says that if they find the fourth book, he'll pay $300,000. Nick could change his life with this, but it's astonishing how he didn't notice that something was amiss. That fourth book could potentially bring about the end of the world, so he probably wouldn't be able to spend all that money anyway. They're heading to the storage unit, but a heavy rain starts pouring down. Christopher begins to explain that he knows all about the owners of that place because his family used to be very wealthy by selling weapons, albeit to the wrong side. His family was behind everything that happened in the world during that time, using those books to perform rituals and manipulate the world in ways never seen before. In the storage unit, they start searching but can't find anything. Nick takes the opportunity to bring more items to his car, thinking there might be more valuable things. However, something feels different, the atmosphere is tense. Outside, he throws away many old things. Up to that point, the woman is still waiting, determined not to miss her chance to retrieve her belongings. Returning to the unit, Christopher discovers a secret door at the back of the old man's storage. It's likely that what they're looking for is there. He tells Nick not to say anything, as they might come across some bizarre things. As they delve further inside, they find a doll in the middle of a ritual circle. It seems that there's more to the story than they initially thought. If you thought things were bad, it's because you hadn't seen anything yet. Nick doesn't pay much attention to these things, and the book is right there in the middle. However, when he steps on a specific mark, something is triggered. The creature begins to transform, as it turns out to be a kind of guardian. In an instant, Christopher is caught, and within seconds, he's devoured whole. Now, Nick has no choice but to run, though he's trapped with nowhere to go. He reaches the exit, but the old woman is waiting outside. He pleads with her to open the door, but she starts looking sly, seemingly enjoying the situation. According to him, she shouldn't even be in the country. He becomes desperate, realizing there's nowhere to escape, and he tries to turn back. However, the creature appears in the hallway, and it seems like he's out of options. And that concludes our horror story for today. This is why it doesn't hurt to do good for others. So, if I can offer some advice, stay away from everyone, and you won't owe anything to anyone. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell on, or the sausage monster will come after you. Now, I'm out of here, see you. I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me and I walk alone.